Understanding Animal Chiropractic for the Veterinarian. I'm Bonnie Harder, a doctor of chiropractic and veterinary spinal manipulative therapy. Today, I want to show you what animal chiropractic does for the animal so you are more informed about chiropractic when you're out in the field. A lot of people ask me, how did you decide to become an animal chiropractor? Well, when I was working out in the barns and the stables, balancing horse rations for Landmark Services Cooperative, I'd run to the animal chiropractors. I saw what they did for those horses, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. I also thought I might adjust people too, maybe. When I mentioned that I'm an animal chiropractor or an equine chiropractor, a lot of people picture a horse on a chiropractic table. I then talk about how I actually adjust them with my hands and they still are like, do you use a two by four or a mallet? No, no, no. I use long lever techniques and short lever techniques. And then I try to describe what chiropractic actually does for the animal. Considering animal chiropractic as a career, you have to become a veterinarian or a chiropractor and then get postgraduate education. Here are some different places you can get certified in the slide below. It's not a weekend course. It is a significant degree and you need a doctorate first in veterinary medicine or chiropractic. So what is chiropractic? In the medical field, it's any joint that exhibits two or three symptoms of decreased passive range of motion, that's a person pushing on the joint to see how it moves or restrict it, active range of motion, like where you're watching an animal walk, move, turn, increased tissue tone is something you feel through palpation, and that can be the difference from like a hard, sharp cheddar cheese to jello in what you're feeling, pain, tenderness, you're looking at, you know, does the animal lay its ears back? Does it stare at you? Does it actually exhibit any kind of annoyance when you touch the area? Edema, swelling in that area, any asymmetry. Basically, it needs any of these things to be considered what's called a segmental dysfunction or subluxation by chiropractors. Depends on what definition you want to use. There are a lot, but they're the same thing. By knowing how to engage these joints with a specific thrust, the segmental dysfunction is alleviated. In the next slides, I'll describe how this happens. The thrust enters what we consider the paraphysiological space for a millisecond. This is what we consider the adjustment. We use mobilization as chiropractors to determine if the joint is not moving to its full potential. We also feel for tight muscle. The thrust and the feel tends to take a long time to develop as a chiropractor or even a veterinarian. Dr. Pedro Rivera, at the Healing Oasis explained a space surgery as you don't know what you're feeling at first and you're afraid you might accidentally cut a crucial artery. Then after a while, you had the feel for what you are doing, you could probably do it with your eyes closed. Benefits of chiropractic. Besides what's on the slide, I get to hear a lot of verbal comments from my people patients going, oh my goodness, they can move better suddenly. I don't feel that pain. Look, I can bend over again. And just wonderful things to hear these things and then see people ride their horses well dogs walk off beautifully again with perfect gates for the show cattle being able to win championships again in their show cattle divisions these are the things i find that are really benefits of chiropractic chiropractors have this weird language about bones and bones out of place when really bones cannot do anything with a muscle or other soft tissue. Chiropractors just use the bony anatomy as landmarks because it is easier than attempting to talk about each origin and insertion of each muscle on a bony prominence. The muscles put tension on bones. Chiropractors attempt to relieve that muscle tension. Remember that slide about the paraphysiological space? When we thrust into that for that millisecond, we engage the Goldie tendon organs at the ends of each muscle. The Golgi tendon organ is what helps prevent lifters from ripping their muscle by forcing the muscle to relax once tension is too great. Chiropractors engage this organ with very fast thrusts and this relaxes the muscle and helps even out that muscle tension on the joint. 
When we get that thrust into the joint, besides just relaxing the muscles on both sides of that joint, we're usually breaking up adhesions within that joint. The Z joint, or the zygapophyseal joint, is a joint within the vertebra. You might know it as the facet joint. This is an example of a joint and what chiropractic does for that. And how it can actually break up the adhesions within the joint, which increases the mobility of that joint. And by increasing mobility of that joint can help the bones remodel and help reverse minor degenerative changes. Chiropractic decreases pain. When we do that thrust into the joint, we're also gapping that joint and helping things like menisci realign that can pinch and cause pain. Similar ideas to apply to the intercapital ligament involving costal joints, like rib joints. Muscles pulling on ribs can cause the ligament to be pinched or rubbed, causing pain. In practice, I see this in cold-backed horses or in a dog that suddenly becomes aggressive for no apparent reason. It's always good to check out those ribs to make sure they're aligned because they cause pain in people too. Time to wake up. Anyone need a break? This is just a cute picture of my cat, Jack. Okay, now that you've had a short nap, ready for some neurology review? This gives you a little more idea what happens within the body for decreasing pain in adjustment. So, little idea here is with the spinal cord. You have the afferent stimulation comes from movement that stimulates the Golgi tangent organs, muscle spindle cells, and other sensory organs to inhibit pain. Adjusting stimulates these pain inhibitors and helps the body keep stimulating them on their own with movement and other sensory. This is just a little taste. If you're looking for more neurology, highly recommend checking out the certification course at the Helionoasis Wellness Center. There is a large focus on neurology and chiropractic. Chiropractic does help nervous system communication. It is like one big information highway. And then every once in a while, you have some road construction. Chiropractic gets in there and removes that road construction so everything can flow and move better. As you can see from this diagram, muscle does work with autonomic function. And if you need a review, autonomic function includes heart rate, digestion, and glandular functions. We also have the brain working with the external environment and the internal environment. This involves the cranial nerves for input. And yes, we do affect the cranial nerves. Then the peripheral nerves, and this all relates to improved communication within the nervous system. Just like everything, there are risks and side effects with chiropractic. There are risks like developing cauda equina syndrome are about one in a hundred million. And that number comes from a spinal manipulation for low back pain study in 1992, published in the Annuals of Internal Medicine. Complications following a cervical spine manipulation are about one in one million. That number comes from manipulation and mobilization of the cervical spine in 1996 study published in Spine. After adjusting an animal or a person, I usually recommend one to two days of rest where they're not doing heavy activities, walking is fine, general activities of daily living, but nothing too aggressive to help the body heal when they haven't been adjusted before. If they're adjusted on a regular basis, they usually don't have any stiffness or any kind of muscle pain after adjustments. But sometimes if they have been a while, my patients do report having a little stiffness or soreness the next day after an adjustment. So having an adjustment right before you go in the show ring or right before the day of the show, not usually recommended. So usually better to have an adjustment about two or three days before that animal is showing or working hard if you want the best possible effects of that chiropractic adjustment. Chiropractic treats a variety of conditions. Neck pain, headaches, low back pain, mid back pain, sciatica are common ones you hear about. Next slides, I will talk about some of the other conditions it does treat. Animals do experience headaches and sciatica and radiculopathy, just like people. Their anatomy and physiology is different a little bit, but not that greatly. I work a lot with horses, hence the logo, but a particular little horse stands out really well that was having trouble with training. Trainer had me out to adjust the little horse. It had so many subluxations or segmental dysfunctions. It was quite impressive. 
when I got done, I had the horse free lunge in the arena just to, to kind of give it a neuromuscular re-education. When it first started out for those 30 seconds, it looked like a gangly foal trying to find its legs. It was quite comical. I wish I would have videotaped it. After about 30 seconds, though, that horse took a frame, was treading beautifully, had a wonderful core activation, everything. The trainer was very happy. Chiropractic does really well for grade one, grade two lamenesses, where it's really hard to figure out what's going on exactly. Cervical genetic vertigo, ataxia, sometimes is occasionally caused by just the horse being severely, severely subluxated in all kinds of ways. Other times I do catch other neurological issues and refer them immediately to the vet. Ear infections, chiropractic does help with ear infections. I did have a pit bull I was called out for because the antibiotic treatments were just not quite working. Two adjustments, finally the ear infections started clearing up. Chiropractic really helps when you're adjusting the neck to help increase lymph flow. This is why ear infections really help clear up too. It's when you have all that lymph flow in the neck, just can't quite go anywhere and get down to that liver. It makes a big difference when everything's flowing properly within the body. Chiropractic can treat bowel and bladder problems. If there's nerves that are healing in the cossacks or the sacrum, you have some atrophy of muscles, a lot of times we can help bring some of that back. Hip dysplasia commonly have improved quality of life of dogs with chiropractic and home exercises. Chiropractic helps with arthritis pain because of that increased mobility and decreased pain function. And it doesn't limit itself to just dogs, cats, and horses. I've treated a rabbit that wasn't hopping in and out of its cage well or on things. Improved that animal's life and was hopping normally after two adjustments. I have an animal chiropractic friend over in Utah that's treated snakes for not crawling real well because the ribs being out of place. I've known other animal chiropractors treating birds for flight. list goes on and on. Chiropractic isn't always about just fixing problems. Many times it's about preventative care, maintenance routine. Spring is the best time for tuning up horses right before shows, making sure everything is quite right. Same for agility dogs. People a lot of times come in for routine care to prevent headaches and low back pain. Doesn't take often, doesn't take too much, but makes a huge difference. I donate my time. A lot of times with therapeutic riding stables where people in disabilities are riding horses, those horses are working hard for those people. They can't always afford chiropractic. So I offer that to help these horses stay fit, stay doing their job well in a long time. Many states, including Illinois, require a chiropractor to seek a veterinary referral in order to treat an animal. Please watch out for the equine adjusters, body balancers, and all those that do not have doctorates, that do not have extra certification courses, they will not be most likely seeking the veterinary referral. And they can be reported to the Professional Regulations Department, so they will not hurt or damage animals. Most chiropractors, when they send you a referral for a signature, do have their own professional liability insurance in animal chiropractic, so there should not be a veterinary liability for signing the referral. Now that you have a good understanding of animal chiropractic, you have one more tool in your tool bag to help animals and even possibly get a second opinion.